go through that uh, fear, maybe is the right word. You, nobody wants to lose their captain. And you don't know if you have or not for a block of time, then you find out there's a good chance you're not going to, then you're in a much better mood. There's no, nobody's replacing, replacing their elite players. There just there isn't, or there would be no salary cap, right? You just have all of them. So he's a key piece. Welcome into Hunt for the Cup. Mike Cuno alongside Steve Goldstein. Goldie, we're not in Kansas anymore. Excuse me, Florida. We are, <laughs> yes, in Edmonton, Alberta at Rogers Place. The stage is set for Game 3 of the Stanley Cup Final, of course. The Panthers have a 2-0 series lead. Goldie, we were just hearing from head coach Paul Maurice about their captain, Alexander Barkov. Uh, good news is he's going to play today. Um, was there any doubt you thought that he wouldn't suit up for Game 3? I really didn't think there was any, especially after yesterday when he was able to practice and he just had a regular, you know, normal helmet and and, and shield on. So there was no full bubble on his face or anything like that. So luckily, uh, crisis averted. He, along with Sergei Bobrovsky, are probably the two guys you just – you cannot lose, although he probably throw Gustav Forsling in there as well. But mm -hmm. Alexander Barkov is the best all-around player in hockey right now. He's been masterful defensively and uh, matching up against the great Connor McDavid. You need Barkov, so everything's okay. Tarasenko's in. Panthers going to roll out the same lineup, trying to win their sixth consecutive game yeah. in the playoffs. I know it's ancient history now, and the Panthers will treat it as such. But the hit from Leon Dreisaitl, no one here is going to talk about it anymore, but that's what we can do. Uh, <laughs> surprise, no further punishment came down. I was not. Um, it was a two-minute penalty on the ice. Now, could the NHL have played the result if Barkov was out, if he had a concussion or yeah. something else was going on? Then maybe you sit dry sidle. Perhaps that would have been the case. But, you know, look, th these guys are playing for the big trophy. You don't get the chance to do it all the time. Um, they want to see everybody on the ice. I know Panther fans wanted him suspended. Uh, it easily could have been if it was in the regular season. Maybe it is a suspension. But in the Stanley Cup final, the NHL, perhaps because Barkov is okay, mm -hmm. Alex, no suspension, no fine either. The right. only guy that got fined for those three cheap shots the Edmonton Oilers <laughs> took was uh, was Sam Carrick for that, that spear on Dmitry Kulikov. Yeah, well, they're going to move past it. The Panthers have done a good job of putting blinders on in past series when you look at what happened with Truba and the Rangers and even the whole Brad Marsh Cheyenne, you know, fiasco with Boston. <laughs> the Panthers found a way to move past some of the drama and keep the winning going. Now, what they have to figure out is how do they put the blinders on and not get too excited, too amped up. They are just two wins away from winning the Cup. Kyle Pozo talked about staying locked in on Game 3 going to be impossible not to be on your mind but in saying that when you go to the rink or when you're preparing for the game you're preparing for one game and that's it your your next game is is always the most important one so we're focusing on on game three you know obviously you can you can think about the the bigger picture if you want but once it's time to go there's no thoughts of that it's about your next shift it's about the next period the next game Goalie, I think it's interesting. Really, it seems like they've been focusing on the bigger picture, task at hand, getting to the cup, winning the cup, but have compartmentalized each and every game, each and every shift. They've done a really good job there. They've also done a really good job of containing Connor McDavid. What you like about maybe their adjustments they made after game one, after the Oilers came out on a hot start in that first, second period? Well, I thought they really adjusted during game one. Yeah. I think the second half of game one, the Panthers looked like themselves, especially in the third period. They only allowed seven shots on goal. Then they come out the first two periods of game two and allow a total yeah. of seven shots on goal. Mike, Connor McDavid is a great player. He's the best offensive player in the world. But Braden Point is really good. Yeah. And so is Stamkos and Kucherov and Pasternak and Marshan and Zibanejad and Panarin and Kreider. This is what the Panthers do. They're the best defensive team in hockey. And if you notice and you watch closely, every time Connor McDavid's got the puck, mm -hmm. they're trying to obviously stay with him. Great sticks. I thought Aaron Ekblad and Gustav Forsling have done a great job with their sticks. And every chance you have for a little whack or a little bump, that's not going to get called. They know that line. This team is a veteran team. They've been through this before. They know what they can do. There's contact every time. Incredible. They've held them to nine shots on goal in the first two games and no goals. I think it's interesting. You mentioned how the Panthers do such a good job of neutralizing the stars on the other teams. Meanwhile, the Panthers seem to have these rising stars in each series. If you go back to the Rangers series, the job Gustav Forsling did 
defensively and, and offensively scoring key goals uh, help them get past the Rangers. And now you've got a guy in Evan Rodriguez doing it. What can you say about not only the job he's done, but maybe the flexibility he has in this lineup to make sure he's doing his job no matter what line he's in. Yeah, I think you could throw Anton Lundell right in there, too. Yeah. He's been phenomenal. He set up a couple of those goals, scored the big one against the Rangers that won game five. So when you start getting those depth players doing what they're doing, and it's not all Barkov, Reinhardt, and Kachuk. And by the way, Sam Bennett's got a five, five yeah. six-game point streak going right. now as well. Um, that's what championship teams do. And that's what always happens in the Stanley Cup playoffs because very often teams that get to the final and even get to the conference final, there's a ton of talent up top. And they yeah. kind of cancel each other out in a lot of ways. What are you going to do with the extra players? Last game for Edmonton, not only did, did the forwards not get a goal, Mike, only three forwards even had shots on goal, and that was Dreisaitl, McDavid, and Hyman. None of the other nine forwards even had a shot on goal. But you talked about Rodriguez. Yeah. You go back to him. Once again, another guy that Bill Zito signs has moved all around the lineup and Paul Maurice last game puts him up on the Barkov line. It clicks. Incredible. Three goals in the first two games of a cup final, tying an NHL record for a guy that never even played in the Stanley Cup final before this year. Yeah, not bad. Um, we did hear from Evan Rodriguez this week uh, about winning the cup. And just like Opozo, they're staying focused. They're not getting too far ahead of themselves. Evan Rodriguez isn't feeling himself right now. He's still locked in on the task at hand. I'm not too worried about about the point totals or goals. It's at the end of the day, we're looking for wins here, and um, yeah, that that's all I care about. It's it's nice to contribute. It's nice to contribute to a win, um, and yeah, that's that's what we're we're here to do. And um, you know, it could be any player on any given day, and um, yeah, just again happy with the results we've got in the first two games and we'll start getting ready for game three now. As you mentioned, Goldie, it's not just the stars, the Barkovs, the Ryan Hartz, the Verhegis who are getting it done. It seems like everyone's chipping in in different ways. And the defensemen, I mentioned forcing a little while ago, but really when you look at this team, when you look at Ekblad, uh, Nico Mikola, like the job these guys are doing that are they're going under the radar, what can you say about the job that Paul Maurice has done getting his defenseman ready for this series. Well, it's been remarkable, yeah. you know, and, and the job Dmitry Kulikov's really done all year on the penalty kill. You know, the penalty kill for the Panthers was a problem last year. It was one of their few weaknesses. Zito goes out, he brings in Kevin Stenland, brings in Dmitry Kulikov, Kulikov and Ekman Larson. Look, there's going to be times, and now on the road, especially where the home team has the last change, they're going to be up against the big boys yeah. in this game tonight and in game four. They've done an excellent job. Mikula chips in with a goal. Uh, you know, Swung that, out of his shoes on that one. I mean, he, <laughs> he's had a better offensive year than he's ever had in his career. And then everybody, you know, and then you forget about Brandon Montour, right. who's going 20, 25 minutes a night with great skating. So they've done a terrific job, not only the defense core, but those forwards, Mike, they come back and help out. And now you're seeing this team with 14 wins. They've never been this close to winning the Stanley Cup before. Two to go. What happens last game? Edmonton gets 19 shots on goal. The Panthers blocked 19 other shots. Everybody's selling yeah. out. They can smell it now. You do whatever you have to do at this point in the season to try to win that thing. This point of the season, tonight will be game 102 for the Panthers of this season when you combine, of course, the regular season and the postseason. So it's nice to have young, fresh legs like an Anton Lundell who has been getting it done. We called him, jokingly, Baby Barkov yeah. for a while for a reason. But, but why is that so true? Well, he plays a 200-foot game. Yeah. That's really the reason. He, he's a Finn. Uh, he's a centerman. So why not call him Baby Barkov? <laughs> because Lundell is terrific defensively. And really, for the second straight year now, mm -hmm. we're seeing his offense come alive. He comes in tonight. Uh, he's in the top five on this team in scoring in the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, he sets up a couple of goals uh, last game. Gets, as we mentioned, that big goal at Madison Square Garden. Remember, Eastern Conference Final, Mike. That series is even at two, and game five is tied with 10 minutes left until Anton Lundell scores. So Lundell is a first-round pick, and it's amazing what a program and what winning does because he comes in. The Panthers already had the winning culture. Mm -hmm. He's already played more than 50 playoff games for a 22-year-old guy. Lundell looks like he is going to be a future guy for the Panthers, not only in the present, going to be here 10, 15 years and be a top-six player. We can gush about Lundell all day 
all day, all night, every game. He, he's had such an impact on the team. But why don't we let his teammates do a little bit of that for him? I saw you guys call him like baby Parker or whatever. So yeah, basically, that's a pretty that's pretty good. And like he he's playing good defense game, and also he got the offense, and he's playing like a little bit mean. So it's it's good. All right, so a lot of stars shining in this series. They're getting it from everybody. And of course, it all starts with Sergei Bobrovsky. We've gone through this entire pregame show. Haven't mentioned the guy in net. Uh, is he the best player on the ice in this series? That's a great question. I still think Alexander Barkov is the best player yeah. on the ice. But what Sergei did the first 28 minutes mm -hmm. of game number one, so far anyway, through two games, through six periods, that's the best the Oilers have played. They were coming hard. They had quality scoring chances. And Sergei Bobrovsky just shut them down. Now, since then, he's done a terrific job. But last game, there was one high danger chance against. So usually, except for the first half of that first game, the Panthers don't ask him for the quantity they keep the shots on goal low yeah. but from a quality standpoint against these shooters look Sergei Bobrovsky if the Panthers go on and win two more it's probably going to be the Conn Smythe winner as the playoff MVP he's allowed two goals or fewer in 12 of his last 13 games think about that going all the way back into the second round mm -hmm. the other thing that you really can't measure Mike is how much confidence he gives the guys in front of him right you know the D you know, the, the, the Panthers are very aggressive with their defense in the offensive zone. They pinch a lot to keep pucks in. So if you do that 10, 15 times a game, once or twice, it may go the other way. Mm -hmm. When you have the confidence that Bob is going to make those saves, the D can be more aggressive. Uh, he's been outstanding. And again, I think if he wins two more games, he automatically puts himself into the Hockey Hall of Fame. You mentioned all that that the Panthers have done to the Oilers defensively and in net, it's really frustrated them. We saw that frustration boil over there in the third period. Is there any of that going to leak into tonight's game? Well, I think, you know, the nastiness, mm -hmm. it's always there in these series. But I don't think it'll start tonight because the Edmonton Oilers know if they don't win this game tonight, they're finished. They're yeah. not winning four in a row against the Panthers. Personally, I don't think they're winning four out of five against the Panthers, but right. they have to win tonight. So we're going to see Edmonton's best with that speed, with this crowd behind them, because they know they've got to bring everything they can to the Panthers, you know, offensively and try to find a way to crowd that net against yeah. Sergei Bobrovsky because the zone he's in right now, Mike, he's going to make the saves if he sees it. But you know, as these games go along, it doesn't take much to fuel the fire. Yeah. The Panthers have done their best in the playoffs to stay out of all of that. Right. They've been a very mature team, a disciplined team. But if you want to go and get a little nasty, They've you know the, the Florida guys. Panthers will answer the bell. Yeah, it, it, it's funny because their play gets under people's skin. It's not even right? it's not even just being nasty, like having enforcers out there on, on every shift doing, you know, crazy stuff. It's just kind of the way they play. All right. We are not, um, you know, forgetting about our friends down in South Florida. We know it's been a very rainy and kind of at times probably scary situation down there with the weather. Uh, the Panthers got a little wrapped up in that last night on their way here. They were delayed. We heard from head coach Paul Maurice about that. How much did the delay for the Cats maybe affect the routine ahead of game three? Yeah, I don't think it's a big deal at all. Mm -hmm. um, it happens at times during the season. It's a couple of hours. I can tell you this, the Panthers team playing, they spare no expense. Yeah. It's a beautiful, comfortable spot. The guys were playing poker and hanging out and watching videos and doing all that. So the fact they got here to Edmonton last night at 8 o'clock our time instead of 530 our time really isn't a big deal. And I actually think, Mike, it may play to their advantage because there's no time to do anything else. They right. got in, had a bite to eat, went to bed, had a hard, you know, full skate this morning. Yep. It's an early game tonight, 620 local time. Just show up and play the game at this point. A bite to eat is an understatement because coach said they had about 12 meals probably, and the yeah. coaching staff probably each <laughs> added seven pounds on, uh, onto those. Oh, there's about, good food on that yeah, plane. Oh, I I, I'm that. sure. Yeah, you know from experience. No it would have been nice to have been on that plane. It took us about 20, 21 hours to get here, but we're here. And so is game three. Hunt for the cup. Stanley Cup edition. We're wrapping up another pregame show here. Thanks again for tuning in. From Edmonton, for Steve Goldstein and Mike Cuneo, We'll see you next time, and maybe, who knows, the Cats had a 3-0 series lead after this one.
Hunt for the Cop on CBS News Miami is sponsored by your Volkswagen dealers of South Florida. Check out local offers at VWFlorida.com.